Today we have come to church and we've come with different reasons. Some have come these days I don't want to say I'm going to pray. I want to say I've gone to worship God. Praise God. And there is one thing I've learned in scripture. Then when two or three are gathered together, God would be in their midst. So that's why sometimes I come in the morning, said for sure, there is this problem, I'm going. Because since we are more than two, I know you'll be in our midst. So believe God is here because that is his word. Today I wanted us to look at how we connect, how to connect to this big, big God, the God of breakthroughs. How many of us want breakthroughs this morning? All of us. Hallelujah. How many of us admire this big God, the strong and the mighty? Then why are you going, how are you going to get the breakthrough if you don't admire that one? Praise God. I got saved in P3 way back in the 70s. And I didn't get saved because I wanted to, I was fearing hell. It's just because when they were teaching us RIE, they taught us about those big and powerful men of God in the Bible. They taught us about the Elisha, the Daniel, and how I wanted to be so close to God so that I can also have that anointing, be this mighty woman of God. These days I've, I keep on remembering, remem- reminding my God that look here, You know why I got saved. I really want to be your friend. I want to have this intimacy with you. Praise Jesus. So today I wanted us, I want us to look at how the ways we can connect to this big God. The the God of breakthroughs. How do we connect? How do we get to him? And this is by prayer. And In the Uganda service, we had this illustration of uh, the own falls dam, where our electricity comes from. And Pastor Laban made my work easy. That one maybe we may not understand, but we looked at the types of of lamps. How many of us know this katadoba? I think my age, all of us know, maybe those who grew up here. Then what about the gas lamp? Okay. And we are wondering, what would we want to be? Of course, the, this katadoba brings shoot. There is a lot of smoke. It can be affected by wind, and it doesn't give enough light. Some of us, that's why I'm putting on glasses, because, you know, we use those putadovas to read. Hello? There are many things to thank God for. Secondly, even the gas lamp, it makes noise. It can give enough light, not really very enough enough light, but because it has also inconveniences. You have to move it from one place to another. But then there is electricity. Hello? Which one of, of the three would you want to be? And again, even there is the sun. Wow. And that's why the Bible says that we are the light. So which type of light would you want to become? Hallelujah. The katadoba is cheap. You can buy it so easily. 
the gas lamp relatively cheap electricity there is wiring there is paying in umeme there is paying yaka and the sun hallelujah so you have that in mind as we journey through the means and the ways of connecting to this power source and this power source this morning is god and we are looking at prayer of course prayer has so many things they have many types of prayer there are many acts of prayer but we are going because of time to go to look at different types of prayer and ways of prayer and what is prayer and who initiated prayer and why do we pray god knows us and knows we want these things that's what the bible says that our heavenly father knows and yet we are wondering why jesus keeps on saying pray without ceasing how many of us have altars altars at home altars in business and personal altars i have i think all but what prompted me when pastor requested me to to preach or to teach i love teaching was what happened to me when we were in israel this last time for all nations convocation to pray for the peace of jerusalem and the quickening of the second coming of Jesus there is this pastor from Zimbabwe Langton he talked about passing over david served his season and then he handed over and i felt it was for me i need to hand over to this young bachiga so i went to him and told him do you know I really you teach me more about this handing over passing over authority passing over because he he taught us how we run the rallies you run and give over so he asked me do you have an old i said wow pastor aban and intercessors intercessors for uganda taught us those things and i established altars a long time ago to the extent that even on my house i had to put an upper room for my god so he said okay how old are your children do you have those whom you are staying with i said yes how often do you have them on the altar and you know as they are young forcing them is so easy because it's a word altar at this time and everyone it's like you no know, i was like an army commander turn right turn left but now they are men and i say to you sometimes sometimes they don't come say what you know it was like god talking and with a lot of anger those children have to obey you those children have to respect you they have to be at the altar they looked at him do you know what you are talking these are big men then he said sister you have nothing to pass over authority inheritance is passed over at the altar <sighs> I felt so bad. Hello. So when he asked me I felt maybe maybe some of my brethren may be in the same 
predicament. Praise God. So how much do we service those altars? Remember the altar recognizes the person that burns incense on the altar. And by altar I'm, pray, I'm talking about praying. It may not be you going to this upper room, but how much incense comes out of you? How much do you service the family altar? How much do you service the personal altar? The quality of time you spend on the altar, the quality of time, the amount of time you spend in prayer is going to reflect on who you are in the public. We all want breakthroughs. And I'm telling you, prayer is work. Prayer is what? Prayer is work. There is somewhere where we would fast and pray, fast and pray, until someone said, Mm-mm, me, I'm leaving your group. This business of fasting, 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 uh-uh. I want to enjoy my food. Praise God. What so, how much power do you hold in your body, in your life? We are looking at how, what Jesus promised. He said, he told the, the, the disciples, John, John, John 15, 7. Someone should read for us. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. We looked at John 14, 9 to 11. Jesus said to him, I have been with you so long, and yet you have not known me. And yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Continue to... Do you not believe that I am in the Father? and the Father in me. The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Praise God. Prayer is communicating with God. Prayer sustains our fellowship with God. And the ministry of prayer was initiated by Jesus. Throughout his stay on earth, he would always withdraw from the crowd, go somewhere to communicate to the Father, so that he gets the power to minister to the people, to the crowds of people. So, in other words, he depended on, a, on power outside himself. He depended on the power that would come from, was coming from the Father. So, brethren, the power of a church, the power of a community, the power of a family, the power of a, first, a person is entirely dependent on the intensity of the prayer altar. I have my group whom we pray with at the business altar. And you know you battle 101 things. So one day one of them said, do you know people? 
If becoming rich means this, ah, I'd rather remain poor. So they told me, I laughed. I said, Teddy, it's not about being rich. It's about who you are in God. If an elephant entered this church, how many of us would run? And how many of us would not sit? Hello? How many of us would not see an elephant entering the church? All of us. What about this small insect? They call it Munyera. I don't know what they call it in, in English. You know these ones, the small ones that go on food, they call black ant. That one, a black ant, I think it's big. You know those insects that go on food? How many of us can notice that it has entered the church? Hello? The higher the level, the higher the devil. Because you become a target. But you know, as you grow into intimacy with God, as you grow into knowing your God, even when those battles come, you are not the other grasshopper which the, the other ten saw. The other spies. You know, they said we looked like grasshoppers before these giants. Hello? Inside you, what are you? Are you a giant or a grasshopper? May God help us to tap into this power that we are elephants, not grasshoppers. And when we back at the enemy, he will free. Praise Jesus. How many of us are with me? So, it's your power depends on the intensity of the prayer. The same applies to the church. The same applies to the church. I want to repent before the pastor because the one who was leading worship the first in the morning was complaining. We have midweek service, but only about 10 come. So, how, how, how powerful are we as Kansanga Deliverance Church? Live alone you, are, you yourself. But how powerful are we as Kansanga Deliverance Church? How much fire do we hold? How much, of, how much fire do we hold? May God help us. So, the weaknesses... The church's weaknesses, the family weaknesses are therefore in neglecting the prayer altar. There can be, there cannot be greater works without the prayer altar. And you know the devil has made it so hard. You have to get up very early in the morning and you are running crazy the whole day. Remember, prayer is work. By the time you go home, you are so tired. You pray the grace. If you are lucky like me, you pray Psalms 91 and cover yourself. Then you get these dreams, these nightmares, you know. Your spirit is attacked in the dream because you are not connected to the fire source. This does not mean... That where there is no prayer, the church ceases to grow. No. I wouldn't want to, to quote some churches, but it's obvious it's in the papers. We saw how many people were going to Bijingo's church. There were too, too many. So it doesn't mean the church won't grow. It will grow, but it will be a weak church. It doesn't mean that your family will be destroyed. No, it will be there. But it will be a weak family. You will be a weak believer. Vulnerable to the attacks of the devil. But you know when attacks come to the person who is connected, he has a muscle to stand against the devil. Hello? And you know what makes 
makes me feel bad is that at the end of the day, you don't do the exploits that God intended you to do. So you are a liability in the kingdom of God. May God help us that we are not liabilities. That when he comes to check the vessels in his, in his house, you are not a plastic or a disposable plate. Hello? Some prayer altars, even when they exist, they need repair. Like mine, because the man of God said, Senior citizen, go and repair your altar. Praise God. And many of us are still moving because of the grace of the prayers of which other people said, prayed on our behalf. Prayer outlives those who said those prayers. I may be enjoying my grandmother's prayers, but what have you banked on the spiritual account for yourself, for your children, and for your descendants? Remember Abraham. He banked. Can you imagine now we are still praying for the prayers of Abraham? Because of those altars and the sacrifices he, he sacrificed on these altars, we also say, you know, we are grafted in Abraham. Abraham blessings are mine. Can your children, can people stand up and say, we serve the, want to serve the God of Jehovah? I want to thank God that there are those who say, we will pray the God of Jehovah. Praise Jesus. And some, of course, of the prayers are those we said when we, were, when we had just got saved and you were on fire for God. But if what we sowed gets exhausted, then you expect famine. I told the people in the first service that at one day a, a, a Muslim got a problem and I was to pray. You know, they had all the Korans around and I wanted to show them my God. I would pray the demons would move and come back and even laugh. Can you imagine? I really felt so bad. But of course I didn't want to show this, the mother, <laughs> that I'm, I'm weak. I don't, I'm not on fire. So I had to put them in a vehicle, take them to Mutundwe, and they just rebuked the demon once like this, and the demon cried, I'm going back to Mubende, but they should never come back to Mubende. Hello? What I delight in is that one, that the mother got saved. Praise God. How much time do we spend before God? Because the time we spend before God is a sacrifice. <clears throat> me. It takes self-denial. I want to thank God for, of recent, uh, at least I put on this, this radio of Motundwe, and they have to wake you up at, uh, at four. You know the, the Muslim Satan, you know he steals the principles of God and uses it for his people and the people get results. Do you see Muslims? While you are busy snoring, they are busy taking advantage of the morning. And no wonder they go out and they succeed. And by the time for you, you wake up the whole air has been polluted. All your blessings have been hijacked. Let's read Job chapter 38, verse 12 to 15. I'm a teacher. I'm not an evangelist. I don't know how to, to do all the gymnastics on the on the stage, so I'm, I'm seeing some people sleeping. 
but you don't know what is what you are going to miss. Hello? Shake yourselves so that you hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Have you have you commanded the morning since your day days began and caused the dawn to know its place? That it might take hold of the ends of the earth and the wicked be shaken out of it. It takes on form like clay and a seal and stands out like a garment. Praise God. At what time do we wake up? I wake up at four. Because I can't allow a Muslim to pollute the air before I talk to my God. And in fact, <laughs> when we were in Israel, they were teaching us, when they are saying all oh, those things, eh? They are, they are cursing Christians, they are cursing the Jews. You are taking away your blessings. And that you are, we are supposed to inf- diffuse them with the blood of Jesus. Those enchantments. Hello? But for you, you are so worrying they are st- st- stealing your blessings and your money. But have you ever commanded the morning? Look at that part. The earth is like clay. So when you get up, how did God create the the world? By what? By the word of his mouth. And you are supposed to use your word, your mouth, your tongue, which has a power of life and death, to shape your destiny into what you want it to be. You are supposed to get up early to shake out wickedness in your destiny. So that by the time you go, I pastor said that now he he, he used people who are not seeking God on their own. But you know, when I had got a problem, I went with Pastor Laban for a retreat in Nakanyon. And these words, they will never left, left my, my mind and they've been effective. Some, I, rather Isaiah 55, verse 6, 7, 12, and 13, even if you don't see there. It says, when you seek, you can put, you can read or you can put as I'm, I'm talking because my time is almost running out. That you know, that Isaiah 55, verse 6, that when you seek God early, as you move out, mountains will burst out in a song for you. Hello? And trees will clap hands for you. Hello? How is your prayer life? You are leaving Muslims and the wicked. By the way, the witches, they have to do, to do the enchantments at dawn, at dawn. So for you, by that time you are snoring, and that evil one is sowing evil weeds in your life. And by the time you wake up like this, affliction, problems, troubles are up to your eyebrows. Prayer. What is the answer? Prayer. He says pray without ceasing. When we look at Job 1, Job chapter 2 verse 1, that we pray without ceasing because our, the devil is moving up and down looking for whom to devour. And if he finds you are not ready, you are not on fire, you are not covered, What will happen? You will be a victim. At one time, Dr. Tabaro Koka was teaching that when you become casual with God, you become a casualty.
Hello? And by the way, whatever we own is sustained in God. By Him. Otherwise, we can't do much. Thank God for His grace would be finished. You know, I read somewhere where it was saying that God loves a sinner and hates a lazy person. Do you know why? He says that even the lazy person, the, the, the lazy person, the one who doesn't work shouldn't eat. So when you don't eat, you die. Hello? I hope I'm not talking hard, hard stuff. So this business of covering your head and, you know, and being too busy for God, it's very dangerous. Besides, he says in Isaiah 1, Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. I love the part A. Come and we reason together. But there are so many times God wants to reason with you. To talk to you about that problem. To give you solutions. But he is looking for you and you are nowhere to be seen. You are running up and down. You are also taking, you are reasoning with man. Spare, I really want to see you. I have a problem. I want to talk to you. Isn't it what we do? We talk to these friends and they are as limited as we are. Instead of talking to the unlimited Hello? I pray from here we improve our prayer lives. Because prayer is life. You cannot survive without prayer. That the eye of the Lord, is it Isaiah 45? Isaiah 45 verse verse 19. Okay, we, let's first see that, then I will see where the other one is. That you know he didn't, he did not say to the seed of Jacob, seek me in vain. Hello? Sinza kusinza kore virunji nimfira mwao sichiri bao. Hello? I can't worship and pray to the right God and his glory is not seen. And remember, do you know like now what I pray? I tell God, I want your glory to be seen through me. When Jesus was walking the streets of this earth, no one knew he was the son of God. Why were they following him? Miracles. The hungry knew he would multiply the fish and bread. The sick knew they would be healed. The demon possessed knew he would drive out the demons from them. So when his glory is seen in our lives, then we attract those who will come. And once they have come, they will get to know the true God. That we are not seeking God for miracles. We are seeking God and worshipping him for who he is. But what, is, what attracts them? Is our lives. Hello? A sister, of, a sister was telling me that she was preaching in, the, in a taxi. And this conductor said, Twaliza mwere laba wuchifana gana. Kato yo kato wanda wuka ruwa chita kuwe moto koruwa no tuwe njigamu. Hello? Praise God.
So another, pray, another thing is sometimes when we are praying, we are praying to this invisible God. How many of us understand this God? Or you think he's just sitting there die in heaven and he wants us to beg him and pour him? He lives among us. But sometimes, as Pastor has said, he's moving in our lives and we don't see him. It's prayer that sustains our fellowship with him. And the awesome sameness of God is revealed every time man learns to deal with the invisible God as visible. Praise God. I was telling the people in the first service of how the, the Nema people arrested all my things, the driver, the tipper, everything. And I had gone, God had, my husband had taken me to appreciate me, to celebrate me. He really took me out, took me to Selena to give me a meal I haven't. I hadn't cooked. To help, to, to sit me with the, the queens and, and the kings. To recognize me. Because I had got two awards at the same time. A winner in Uganda. A winner as in the Great Lakes region. As one of the most among the most influential women in Africa in business and governance. And you can imagine he has, I had to put on my best, put on lipstick and put on makeup because I had gone to meet him. He had gone to celebrate me. And you know, as it is in a job, the devil shows up. How many of you, when you think you are, you are happy, the devil shows up? Yeah. And you know when you are on fire, you know how to talk to him. So when he showed up and they called me that, you know, they had arrested the things and they want me, I just switched off my phone and I said, excuse me, I don't have, I don't have time for you, Satan. Just stay at bay. This is my time. It's my darling. Then another phone call came through some other person's number. But this time the engineer told me, why don't you call so and so? So I called him and said, Here, hi my son, go and work this out. What I'm doing, what I'm in, I don't want to spoil my happiness. And I'm telling you the peace I got. I can't explain it. So he tried to say, now mommy, I just switched him off. He said, go and sort it out. So he went to Nema, and they are saying, no, 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 we want the, the woman, the project is of a woman. He said, no, look here, I'm, his, I'm, I'm her son. The land is hers, but the project is mine. They said, make a statement. He made a statement. They said, enter the cells. So he said, do you know, can you allow my first call my wife so that she knows I've been arrested? He said it's okay. So now he called a top man in the police. The top man in police called the top man in Nema. The phone calls trickled down. And this time it was nine in the night. And they said, get a driver to drive that tipper, load her things, and take them to site and make sure they are safely in the store. Can you imagine? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there is nothing my God cannot do. Hallelujah. And they said, this has never happened at nine, in the night, and we have to be the people to take the things back. That is our God. Praise God. Put your hands in the hands of the one that calms the storms. And it's through prayer.
put your hands in the hands of the one that is a source of breakthroughs. That is the author of life. That comes the storms in your life. Whatever. I've seen him come storms 101. I can't tell it all. Widowhood is not fun, really. But sometimes I say, I'm waiting to see. And he comes in in a tactical way and I say, yeah, this is my God. I knew you would do it. Praise Jesus. Yeah, so he wants to have fellowship with us. But you've known the secret. The secret of the works of Jesus, which he said will do more than he did. And yet we are this weak. Hello? And yet we are this weak. Don't you get annoyed at yourself? I'm telling you sometimes I really get so annoyed. I want to walk and my shadow touches sick people and they get up. That's why I got saved. I wanted to be, you know, so intimate with him. I, I wanted to possess his power. But you know, fighting with the flesh, the devil and the world, they are also not simple enemies. But as long as you are connected to him in prayer, all things are possible. Yeah, the secret we've seen in John that he, he was not saying, speaking anything on his own, but whatever he would hear from the Father. So for you also, you are not going to do anything unless you are connected to this superpower. Hello? And you, con- you, you get connected to him through reading the word and prayer. The secret of the works of Jesus was not in the physical presence of Jesus. It was in his abiding with the Father. His relationship with the Father through prayers. As we've seen, our model verse is John 14, 12. I don't have time to open the Bible, please. Whoever is helping us, help us out. The book of Acts, why is the church not powerful? Why is the church not on fire? When we look at the book of Acts, it's filled with prayer meetings. The first church was immense in prayer. But when they call us on, on even on Wednesdays, we are too busy. When we look at the church at, at the Pentecost season, they prayed 10 days and preached 10 minutes and 3,000 people were saved. Today we pray 10 minutes and preach 10 days and get to no one to get saved. Pastor, we need prayer. Prayer warriors. May God help us that we value prayer. Because prayer is the key of heaven. Prayer is the key of heaven. Prayer is the key of heaven. Faith unlocks the door. There is no other key but prayer. Remember Jesus said we would do it the way he would do it the way his father was doing it. So he also said we would do it the way he did it. His secret would, would be his secret would become our secret. If Jesus had to do and say only what he had and saw the father do He had to spend a lot of time listening and seeing, and he did. There was a recognizable rhythm in the life of Jesus. He would withdraw to meditate, then go out to minister. Again and again, this pattern repeated itself. The public life of Jesus was supported by his private life with his father. Hello? How is your closet? How is your war room? Hello? How is your war room? 
May God help us. Prayer is the secret of Jesus. He has passed it on to us. But not all Christians receive it. The secret of greater works is received only by those who say, I believe God will do his greatest, his greatest work through my prayers. Praise Jesus. Then lastly, I think my time is almost over. Why does Jesus really emphasize prayer? We've seen all these others for our benefit. We've seen through prayer we become intimate with him. We reason with him. He reveals mysteries, spiritual mysteries which we do not know about. How many of us would want to know what is going to happen tomorrow? Praise God. Of recent, by the way, you can get scared. We want it, but you can get scared. Of recent, he has been showing me the things, and I try to cancel them, but he has shown me it's happening. Hello? Some things he shows you, and they are scaring. You, you wish it, it, it shouldn't be that, but he has revealed we, didn't, we don't need to walk in darkness. You need to move knowing tomorrow this is what is going to happen. But unfortunately, a prophet is not respected in his own home. I hope you've got it. Praise God. He reveals things and sometimes I get scared. and Some, some, some are good, I rejoice. Some are bad, I fear. But I keep on saying God because I fear don't. Don't stop revealing. Wisdom, you pray for it. Revelation, you pray for it. Discernment, you pray for it. Everything, you get it on your knees. We have to pray. Luke 18.1 We have to pray for our lives. And never grow weary because our adversary, the accuser, the devil one is not sleeping. Because of the trials, temptations, failures, hindrances, conflict we face on a daily basis, we need to be in prayer. And he says, pray so that you not fall into temptation. Some things we talk about them, it's like it's like a story. Then he spoke a parable to them. That men always ought to pray and not lose heart. Sometimes you pray and things don't shift. But remember, what manifests in the physical is first pregnant in the spiritual. And as you pray, something is taking place in the spiritual, but we can't see it with our eyes. So we pray, you don't lose heart, and you wait. Hello? Praise God. As he has said, God wants in Isaiah 45:19, God wants us to seek him and will not seek him for nothing. The time we spend with God is not lost. Of recent, I've been praying for my children. And sometimes you pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and you don't see. And one day he laughed. Because I told him, this time I haven't come to pray. And I know when I come, every morning I come, you know I'm bringing my children. Even today I'm not mentioning my children. I want you to talk. And he talked. And somewhere even he laughed. And he told me, I love whom I love. Sometimes I see you in your gymnastics and laugh. If I was going to go around, uh, 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 you know, as, you know, bloodline, you know, descendants, I wouldn't have chosen Solomon, a bastard. Neither would I have chosen Jacob, a thief, or Paul, a murderer. 
But I choose whom I choose, my sovereignty. So how I, I wish you could pray for, for my love. So I started to pray, God, let your sovereignty work in my favor. Let your sovereignty not work against me. Do you get it? I hate whom I hate, I love whom I love. Hello? Is God. Praise God. So we will not seek him for nothing. Lastly, why we pray is that we are his instruments of power. We are his battle axe. He desires to use us to destroy the works of the devil. He can't come from heaven and come down here. I was telling the first service how I've got him from the invisible to the visible. I have this young man who cleans my place. I can't climb up on top of the house. But this young man climbs on top and sees what is happening and comes down, Mommy, eh, there is a, a broken tile there, now there is this. And I've seen my husband entering this young boy, climbing up, to come and tell me what is happening. I saw him entering this headmaster and going to, the, to Nema and saying, excuse me, release my wife's things. Moreover, at nine, and they have to be in the store. That's how our God is. Let's see him. You know, when, when they talked, I got touched. Jerusalem, Jerusalem. You didn't know the day of your visitation. May the day of our visitation not pass by us. But we'll get to know them. We'll go to know the CNN of God on our knees. With closed eyes, it's when God puts on his CNN. Praise Jesus. Heaven is waiting for us to move. He gave us the power. You know, he wants to use us to destroy the works of the evil one. Luke 9, 1. After that, we are going to Jeremiah 1, 10. And I'm, I'm winding. He called, and then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all demons and chua diseases. Over what? How many of you can just rebuke a demon and to, uh, to run away? We exist in weakness because our prayer Hello? How many of us lay hands on the sick and they get healed? So what sort of Christians are we? I read a a WhatsApp message where this man kept on falling into sin of sexual immorality. Now he goes to, to chase demons and they laugh at him. So he went into a bush for a whole week or two weeks and he cried. He said, God, kill me or take away this weakness. Hello? One of the types of prayer is repentance. Sometimes our, our, even when we pray, our foundations are faulty. We have these internal enemies that he has nowhere to sit. Hello? I hope pastor will give me another time to teach about that. Why we pray and we don't get answers. So he wants to use us to cast out those demons. But... We are not connected to, to him, and we are weak Christians. Jeremiah 1.10 See, I have this day set you over the nations. Hello? Principalities. Shrines. Agents of the evil one. And over the kingdoms the kingdoms of the evil one, to root out, pull down, to destroy, and throw down, to build, and to plant. He wants we connect with him, and we be like Elisha. Hello? Who wouldn't want to be like Elijah? Just call fire from heaven, and it falls. Ah, There you would go even on BBC. 
a Christian from Kansanga Deliverance Church called Fire Down. Hello? How many of us want to, don't want to be like Joshua? He told the son, stand still and called upon the name of the Lord and stones rained down and that the people they killed were more than those who died by the sword. It will be so beautiful. Hello? I need power. For a ghost fire, I need you in my life. That I will do exploits for you. How many of us wouldn't like to be like Daniel? Enter the lion's den and say, zip up. But for you, even bees can chase you. Hello? May God help us. And yet he said, those who believe in him will do more exploits. That they will equal his works and they will exceed his works. But even for us, we are not anywhere near. Hello? I'm almost through. Maybe we don't know what hap- we don't know the power we have. How many of us know we are powerful? Is it in Psalms 10 where he says we are small gods? Hello? And yet we are not in anywhere near Jesus. Okay, let's, let's take a, a small trip to heaven. To observe a few interesting things going there. Hebrews 9, 1 to 8. Maybe someone should read for me. Who is a volunteer? Hebrews 9, 1-8 Then indeed, even the first covenant had ordinances of divine service and the earthly sanctuary. For a tabernacle was prepared, the first part in which was the lampstand, the table, and the showbread, which is called the sanctuary. And behind the second veil, the part of the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid on all sides with gold, in which were the golden pot that had the manna, Aaron's rod, that budded, and the tablets of the covenant. And above it were the cherubim of glory overshadowing the mercy, of the mercy seat, Of these things we cannot now speak in detail. Now when these things had been thus prepared, the priests always went into the first part of the tabernacle, performing the services. But into the second part, the high priest went alone once a year, not without blood, which he offered for himself and for the people's sins committed in ignorance. The Holy Spirit uh, indicating this, that the way into the holiest of all was not yet made manifest, while the first tabernacle was still standing. Praise God. Yeah, this passage tells us that there is a temple in heaven. And that's where I want us to go. And this temple... Was, is, is built in the same style, in the same pattern of what Moses built in Exodus 40. There are many interesting objects as we've seen. 
and the activities going on in this temple. For the purpose of the study today, we'll focus on our attention on one specific spot where unusual activity is going on. Let's read Revelation 5, chapter 5, verse 8. Yeah, now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp, a golden bowl full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Hello? They are prayers of what? The other time they will go with blood and burn animals and smoke will go up and to disappear into heaven. But here, it's the prayers of what? How much have you banked? Hello? How much have you banked? Some of us are bankrupt. Hello? May God help us. Let's read Revelation chapter 8 verse 3 to 5. Then another angel, having golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense. Do you know, we know where that incense is coming from. That he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne, the throne of God. When we pray, our prayers go to these elders who are before the throne of God. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, remember the altar in heaven, the altar in the hall of holies, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and as quick. Hello? When we pray, what happens? Now the spot where our whole attention is focused is called the altar of incense. This is where the real angel takes our prayers and mixes it with heavenly version of a popular substance called flank incense and offers it before the throne of God. But he doesn't stop there. We also learn that when our prayers mixed with this heavenly material are released back into the earth, something unexpected happens. What follows is a powerful display of lightning, thunder, and earthquake that looks like a spiritual equivalent of a nuclear explosion. Hello? Praise Jesus. Before I conclude, let me give you a testimony. Mine are so many. We have been praying with my prayer group at school. They really bewitched the school that we, the children fell from like 900 to 400. And for sure you would see there was something that was not right. You find people everywhere. Even to the kitchen. Padlocks. These other birds which look like doves are called what? Those things, you know them. Which are usually which usually come from which doctors. So and you know what I'm telling you, it's common to all of us. It's like I was covered with this blanket. Do you know when you don't feel like praying? Do you know when you feel you take things for granted? Until God woke me up. We started praying. We started praying. And you know we are calling fire. We are destroying these altars. We are calling, you know, all, because all the weapons here on earth are already in heaven. God just reveals a little. 
We are calling all the nuclear bombs. And something unexpectedly happened. It was a Friday. And you know I didn't know. It was a Friday. It rained. Really drizzled. My two sons and my daughter were standing at the shade of the, the administration block. And for them they said fire came. Fire came and entered the office. It went running to these other offices, Bassa's office, those offices the other side. Everything, church and karana. But it didn't hit anywhere. But you know, the Bassa told me that for her she thought her computer had burst and was splashing on her. So of course, well, you know, when we are praying in ignorance, we are binding, we are cursing, eh, hey, now even her, you know, lightning has struck the school, do, 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 do. So, when I had come from Israel, someone posted on uh, Friends of Israel platform that this lady saw sand and lightning hitting strongholds of those those countries, those sources of evil in the Middle East. And it's when God said, yes, do you know, that's why I'm telling you, we need to get the invisible God into the invisible. Me, I thought it was lightning, it had struck the school. No, God was dealing with those altars that we have been calling fire to come. You know when we call fire, it's like, mm -hmm. you know we call fire, not knowing it's going to come. Hallelujah. <laughs> when God comes to destroy those altars, which you know you don't know, fire comes and enters the off administration block, and in fact enters particular offices, and where I have question marks, and dealt with those those what those altars. Hallelujah. Please look at this carefully. Listen at this carefully. It's prayer that initiates this type of explosion. Hello? And you know, they said, Ha! Ah, she has been in Israel praying. <laughs> Be careful now. What is going to come, we don't know. And it really came before I came back from Israel. Hello? Yes. This explosion is initiated by prayer in the spiritual realm. Especially when the prayer is mixed with high praises unto God. It's effective on the earth. Its effect on the earth can be truly devastating. The example is Elijah, the fire on Mount Carmel. Joshua, the stones raining from heaven. Acts as I conclude. Acts 16, 25 and 26. Let's see this bomb. How many of us have ever experienced bombs? As you pray, bombs come rumbling down. This time when we move from this place, I want us to do some practice. But at midnight, Paul and Cyrus were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundation of the prison was shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosened. Praise God. They sent prayer and praise up. The angel at the altar in heaven probably used these as raw materials. Do you see the raw materials? Praise and what? And prayer. There is no nothing the angel with a, with a, a golden bow is going to use if you don't give him raw materials. He used these as raw materials to create something at like akin the spiritual bomb. Once this was released upon the earth, the entire prison was shaken and our heroes were set free to go and fulfill their divine destiny. 
Welcome to the world of prayer bombs. What we've just witnessed is a, spe- a spectacular role prayed by the following prayer, praise, and altar. Each of these is pretty powerful. The skillful combination of all three can have an imaginable resu- result. If you are interested in receiving answers to prayer, you must know that the quality of life you enjoy as a Christian will directly be related to the quality of prayer you pray. For the, the effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man avails much. God bless you. Let's stand up and pray. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Someone put it up there. Call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Hello? Which you do not do what? Father, in the name of Jesus, we worship you. That your word is a young man. Thank you for what you are revealing to us. Sometimes we pray and miss. But today, as Paul says, that we don't box as if we are boxing air. We know the devil's devices. Thank you for equipping us, Lord. We pray that we will not be the hearers of the word, but the doers of the word. We have seen that you want to use us to do exploits, to attack and destroy the, the, the camp of the enemy. But to do that, you want our cooperation. Our cooperation in reading the word. Our cooperation in prayer. Help us, O oh Lord. We can't do it on our own. We need you. We need you, Lord. We need you. And Father, I cover all that we have learned in the blood of Jesus. I put it in an envelope of Holy Ghost fire that the enemy will not be able to steal it. That, Lord, our hearts will be fertile ground where this will bear fruit. That we will come here with testimonies of how we manufactured bombs spiritual bombs, and the devil is too afraid to touch us. That where we prevailed in prayer and our lives have become too hot for the devil to handle. That's our prayer, Lord. That's our prayer. May it begin with Kansanga. May it begin with me. That, Lord, the world will see my God and worship him. The God the man of war, the God of Israel. We bless you. In Jesus' name we pray.